Hey, it's Mark Lenny with your video thought for the day. All right, this week I've been going through some of the bookshelves in my, my office in the Learning Center and talking about the various books. And today I'm at the, the bookshelves that are at the far end. And this is kind of like where I've just sort of thrown some extra stuff, uh, stuff that's useful in some ways, but stuff I also uh, have a tendency to give away. Like I got a bunch of my own books in here uh, that, that I, I uh, hope to give people. And yet, if you look at the top of the shelf, you'll find uh, one of a set of series of commentaries that I keep nearby. These are commentaries that are useful for me to, to see what others have written uh, and what others believe the scripture says in various points. And it's uh, uh, always good to get a, a good rounding of opinions of what uh, brilliant scholars have thought historically about passages of scripture to help me understand those passages better. And, and so I use those, but it's an interesting dynamic because, you know, you can know all about scripture. You can have the greatest knowledge bank there is. You can be the Google of the Bible. You could have uh, every content artificial intelligence can, can gather uh, about scripture and still not know God. Think about that for a minute. Google, or for that matter, an artificial intelligence program, uh, Cla uh, Claude or ChatGPT, um, you can ask them information and data about the Bible and about God, and Google can spout it out. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence can spout it out. But those machines that drive that information don't have a relationship with God. They know about God, but they don't know God in an intimate way. And I can have all of the commentaries and all of the data in the world, but if I don't know God in a personal relationship, I'm just a data source. It's, I think, one of the reasons why John 17 verse 3 says, this is eternal life, that you know the one true God. Knowing God, not in the sense of knowing about him, but knowing him in a relational sense, knowing him in a, in a way that, that means you are, are into his life and he is into your life. Um, that's all the difference in the world. It's one of the reasons I've written this series of books that Baylor's published on uh, the Torah, on the Psalms, on the Minor Prophets, on Jesus. I've got another volume coming out later this year on the epistles, because I want to go beyond knowing about God and spend my life exploring my relationship with God, knowing him. So as I go through my bookshelves, that thought occurs to me, and, and it's, it's a seminal foundational part of my life to know God, not just know about him. And that's why I've decided that maybe I could make this your uh, video thought for the day.